good morning brothers and sisters good afternoon good night good evening wherever you are around the world it's your girl with another video I haven't been on all week so I decided that today I literally have to come on because I wanted to come on yesterday but then oh distraction so then today it's the same thing but I say I'm gonna just go ahead and push through that I'm not going to like you know not share anything today because I know that someone needs encouragement today just like how we all need encouragement throughout our week or a day so yeah so today um, I think I'm gonna make the topic uh, or the title for today trust I want to make the title trust because sometimes when you're going through a lot of hardship you know whether it be the loss of a job whether it be the loss of a family member whether it be um, just maybe healing that you're expecting from God you know sometimes it's not easy when you're within that situation and uh, you know you have to trust God because when when he delays in that situation when you've been praying and seeking for something it so happened that I came across a video this morning that said when whenever you ask him for something and and you feel as if like he's not listening or answering to your prayer he's causing you to have patience so he delays that answer for you to have patience in that situation you know so then the songwriter said that when you don't move that mountain, give me strength to move through it, through the situation when you're unable to move that mountain. You know, so I thought about all of these things and um, I was just like, wow, you know, it's really good that, you know, it's like this sometimes that it really makes sense. That's what I meant to say. It, it really makes sense that when you when you when you're in that situation and you don't see a way out maybe it's financially too and you're like oh my god how am i gonna get through this how am i gonna pay my rent how am i gonna pay my car note how am i gonna you know just do these things that you need to get done in your regular life so the scriptures today is gonna be taken from um I'm going to go to Hebrews 13, but I think that I'll make the main scripture for today, uh, Jeremiah uh, 17, verse 78. It says, But blessed is the man who trusts in the Lord, whose confidence is in him. They will be like a tree planted by the water that sends out its root by the, by the stream. It does not fear when heat comes. It's, it lives or its leaves are always green it has no worries in a in a year of drought never and um, and never fail to to be to um, to bear fruit so pretty much it's talking about the same situation right because God used the parable of the tree right that is able to survive in any kind of like drought or hard time right the tree is not worried about where you know it's 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 um water it's gonna come from to 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 drench the root of the tree for the tree to continue to ro to 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 grow so it's just like us if we put our trust in god i know it's hard sometimes and i know sometimes it, it becomes impossible and unbearable because we're like um, we're mankind right and so sometimes we don't always are patient in waiting on the things of which God has promised us or of the things that we're seeking from God and so this is why he made this example because within that time frame of you looking to God for something that you needed from God you realize that oh my gosh as long as I have him in the boat I can always smile at the storm so this is why he made this example right here concerning the tree because if the tree is in drought if the tree is going through a heat where it's starting to wither then we know that the only person that can breathe life into that tree for it to become alive again for its leaves to be fruitful and to become green again is only is Jesus Christ so just like this 
scenario this is how also that god can change each and every one of our situations and if he hadn't answered your prayer about something he's probably waiting on the right time for him to move in that situation to set you free in that situation whether it be financially whether it be a sickness or infirmity that's in your body glory be to god so i'm gonna run to uh Hebrews 13 and pretty much that's the same thing um, this particular verse is going to be talking about uh, where is it yeah <clears throat> pretty much it's the same exact thing the only difference is that it's also saying is that um you know that sometimes we end up trusting in man more than we trust in God right like a lot of us there are sicknesses that may may take hold of our bodies that you know we're not able to man is not able to fix our man is not able to to you know to give you a cure for it but we have we have heard over and over again time and time again you know, and that is going to fall in, in regards to also another verse that I feel as if the Holy Spirit wants me to share. But in Hebrews 13 verse 6, right? He's saying here, he says, so we can take comfort and are encouraged and confidently say, the Lord is my helper in the time of need. I will not be afraid. What shall man do to me? So we are dependent on man to come up with a cure for certain sicknesses or certain diseases that mankind may have attracted or in, in I don't know, however be you came by it, right? But you're trusting God and you're trusted, then you're saying, okay, just like your job also, you know, you, you're in your job, you know, you're supposed to be getting paid a certain amount of money, but then you realize that your employer is robbing you of that. And then you're like, oh my gosh, you know, you, because you're relying on man. But the thing is that man is not your source. The source that you, that you need to rely upon is Jesus, is Jesus Christ. He's the only source. He's the only healer. He's the one that can do the impossible. So I don't know what situation you're going through today, but be encouraged, brothers and sisters. Be encouraged. Because Jesus Christ, he has your back. God got your back. So he states here also, and I'm um, going to just run to verse 5. Um, um, J say, um, James 5, just because we spoke about infirmities in our bodies that, is, that man says is, is unable to be cured, right? So it says here, it says... Um, in verse 14, James James 5, verse 14, he says, Is is anyone among you sick? He must call for the elders, the spiritual leaders, right? In the church. Right? And he said that they are to pray over him, anointing him with oil in the name of the Lord, and the prayer of faith will restore the one who is sick, and the Lord will raise him up, and if he has committed sins. He will be forgiven. So you see, brothers and sisters, if you are looking for a man, have you heard about a man, Jesus Christ? Have you heard about him, the one that can set you free from your sins, from your infirmity, the one that can provide you a way out if you don't see a way out? Come and know him today because he is real and he will save you from all your sins, from every transgressions, from every iniquity you have ever committed before him. He will wipe that slate clean. The Bible said when he forgives you from all your sins, when you repent of your sins and you, you confess to him your sin, he throws that sin into the deepest part of the, the depth of the ocean. Do you know that there is even some parts of the ocean that man have never discovered, that man has never been able to even come, come to any kind of discovery concerning? There are things on this earth that he have created that man has no idea. 
that is that it exists this is how powerful he is he's the one that spoke the universe into existence he's the one that says let there be light and there was light glory be to god come see a man as mary magdalene said as he set her free he said come she said come see a man just like the blind man that he was that was able to get his sight blind barnabas he said listen he does he don't want them to know that he is he had healed him but he ran and when the when the officials saw him they was like oh my gosh wasn't this the man that was blind from birth how is he able to see now he said, there's a man that named Jesus. He is the one that healed me. He is the one that set me free. He is the one that gave me my sight. Do you want spiritual sight today, brothers and sisters? Do you want physical sight today? Because he can heal you. He can set you free. Glory be to God. How do I get saved? Lord, forgive me from all my sins, my transgressions, my iniquity. Father, I've sinned against you, Lord God. But Father, I believe that you've sent your only begotten son, Jesus Christ of Nazareth, to die for my sins, Lord God. And he rose on the third day. Father, I believe in my heart. And I confess with my mouth. And it's that simple prayer that can get you saved. And then you, after time, you work with the Holy Spirit. And if you know someone that is preaching the word of God, the, the, the word, okay? Because there is so many churches and so many brothers and sisters out there with different agendas that is not preaching the right word. They are preaching different devils, I mean, doctrines, doctrines of devils. This is how simple that you can give your life to Christ, brothers and sisters, because salvation is not promised for tomorrow. Don't put it off for tomorrow. So if you feel a tagging in your spirit, the Holy Spirit tagging on your heart, that you need to repent, that you need to give your life to Christ, that you need to get baptized, get around brothers and sisters in the church that is teaching the word, a pastor. Do it, brothers and sisters. Don't wait for tomorrow because tomorrow is promised no man. Stay repentant, brothers and sisters, because he's coming again and is soon. And no amount of distraction, no amount of anything in this world. Because you know what? We're often so distracted and that's what the world wants. That's what the enemy wants. He wants us to be distracted with so many different things, bombarded with the things that we're not able to have time for Christ working digging waiting for just working more money want more money and the more you get is the more you're digging deeper and deeper you're healing but then you don't realize is that you're moving away from the things that god is requiring of us to spend time with him every day not just once a week it's an everyday journey with him it's an everyday walk so it's an everyday relationship he don't want religion. He just wants a relationship with us. There are so many times when people even get up and go to church on Sundays. But during the week, they don't seek him. I know this because I used to be that, same, that very same person. But even if I can give him 30 minutes of my day, even if I could do 10 minutes. Sometimes it gets so bad that I don't even get a chance to. And I feel really bad because I'm like, oh my God, I didn't even get into the presence. But you know, I will say like a short and quick prayer. But sometimes it, I'm not comfortable with just doing the mere, like just a quick second or two minutes, three minutes. No, I want to be able to sit there and to feel his presence just ruminate around me. That's when I feel the most that I've spent time with him. So brothers and sisters... Give your life to Christ. And if you have given your life and you have backslidden, repent and come to Christ. Because Jesus loved each and every one of us. If he didn't love us, he wouldn't have died on the cross. He wouldn't have shed his blood. He said, Father, take this cup away from me. He said, not my will, but thine will be done. Even the people that crucified him, he said, Lord, forgive them because they know not what they have done. 
Not even the religious leaders knew who he was until they crucified him. And even when they crucified him, they still didn't believe. So I just wanted to encourage someone today. So thank you guys for watching. God bless you guys. Pray for me as I pray for you, brothers and sisters in Christ. And you have a great weekend and a great day. Bye.